<laughs> probably the oldest one here. <laughs> uh, but I am so thankful to be here because you don't know what it means to uh, be able just to stand before those that you know have been called out. <laughs> called out with the Lord, those that love the Lord. And I am so, so very thankful. I, have, I want to introduce some of my girls. Those are your girls. Now, I have some of my girls back here at this table and over here. <laughs> and you know this one, but over there is Luke's wife, Gloria. And there's Lisa. That's one of my girls from way back when, when she was a little girl. Taught her in Sunday school when she was a teenager. And Kim, she, I thought they turned out pretty good. <laughs> they would have to listen to me again. But I thank the Lord for it the time that we have together today. Uh, if you have a Bible, which I do, I carry mine. Um, it's in Romans 8, and we're going to look at, it's not 828 now, girls. You know that's a familiar verse, but it's not going to be 828. <laughs> it may be before I get through. I may be down to the next book of the Bible. <laughs> but, okay. You saw my important. <laughs> Okay. So what's time now? <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Okay. I forgot about That's okay. it. That's okay. Uh, one of the greatest things I think in your life as a believer, as a mother, as a woman, as a wife, as a young girl, you know there's a lot of young girls here today. And I wish I could have known the Lord when I was your age because I did not know the Lord then. I didn't know him. I knew the name of Jesus. I went to Sunday school. I went to Bible school, but I knew of Jesus. I knew about him, but I did not know he died for me. And for a, a 14 long, long, long year, I was a 13-year-old girl. Uh, I went to a church in Coburn, in that big city. Uh, they gave an altar call that day. I went forward, and you had to know me then. And I was bashful, backward. I wouldn't have gotten up out of my seat and gone down in front of that big church. It's not as big as it was. I mean, I thought it was big. And uh, I went down to the altar. And I remember there was a man came to me and said, do you want to be baptized? And I thought, oh, that's what I need. That I had that void and emptiness in my heart and life. So uh, I wanted to be baptized so badly because I had read in the paper that there was a 13-year-old girl in Illinois that had been swept away in a tornado and she died. And I thought, oh, what would happen to me if that should happen to me? So I wanted to be baptized. I thought this one did. Well, I got baptized on Wednesday night, but that didn't change me. I found it. I still had my own uh, emptiness. I still had anxiety, and later on, what we talked about on the discipleship lesson, I had depression to the point where it overwhelmed me. I would walk to the house, and I thought it was going to overtake me. Now, that's how bad it was. But I can actually say, for 14 years, I've dealt with that. And I know what it's about. And I know I got married when I was 18 years of age, and that's when I was. No, my husband's a wonderful man, 63 years, almost 64 years we've been married. But I really had a lot of issues after that. I, I really uh, was on medication. And uh, I remember uh, going to sleep at night and looking at that bottle and thinking, well, I could just take all of those and it's over. And I've had those thoughts. And I don't know what it is. And uh, I thought, I could just take those and it's all the old world. I wouldn't have this. This is the deal with it. But the Lord protected me. He, God knew I knew he was going to save me. Yeah. He knew that. So uh, I didn't do that. I didn't think I was lost. I was God had gone to hell. And when our second child was born, I had a traumatic childbirth and uh, almost died in PD2. I would have gone to hell if I had died then. But he spared me from that. He spared me. And then the Lord saved my husband uh, on May the 30th, 1965, in Valeria, Ohio. We went to Ohio. He 
went to work. And he got saved. The Lord called him to preach. And we went to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I followed him. I was lost. Still had not saved. But after going to Chattanooga, I would listen every day at 10 o'clock to Oliver B. Green. And he probably some of you might know Dr. Oliver B. Green. He's dead, gone on to be the Lord. And he would pray for those poor, lost church members and those nearest hell. I was there. I was that poor, lost church member and probably very near hell. But I actually came to the place where I was under conviction so bad. We were under the sound of the gospel. Dr. Lee Robertson, Highland Park Baptist Church, worked in the bus ministry there. And uh, one Tuesday, two days before Thanksgiving, 1968, I said to my husband, you cannot go to work today. You cannot leave me here. And he said, Sonia, I am so tired of this. I was doubting all the time. I was struggling. I was struggling. He said, he took the word of God, stood in our living room, opened up the word of God to Romans chapter 3. And he said, here, you read it. And I began to read it. And I know it didn't happen this way. Those letters did not come off the page, but they seemed to be coming off the page. Big, black, bold letters that said, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, that's all it took. I saw myself as a sinner. I was proud. I was not as bad as that person that's going in the church down there on the corner. I was staying in Monroe, Aloha. I would watch those people go in that little congregational church every Sunday morning and think, well, I don't need to go to church. I'm better than they are, or as good as they are. That I was. I was lost. But I, that day, it was November the 26th, 1968, I ran, literally ran in her bedroom and got down on my knees at that bed, called out to God, to save my soul. I came out, <laughs> whoo, out of that bedroom, and I came out of that bedroom, and I was a different person already. I was a new creation in Christ. Yeah. All things became new, even my dirty kitchen. It became new, <laughs> all that laundry. At that time, I had three. When we left Chattanooga, we had six. And we multiplied. <laughs> and we uh, had two at one time. Well, anyway, and then um, I could say we worked in the bus ministry, and you never, never minister until you work in the bus ministry. If you want to love people, you get you a van, and you go out there and start knocking on doors and see what those people are doing and living, how they're living. Those are the children. I have seen numerous children who say, don't have bus routes. We started bus routes in Chattanooga. Now that's a tough city. That's one of the it's dirty. <laughs> but we left it. The Lord broke our hearts and then he sent us back to the mountains. But that's I say all of that to say this. But I learned this truth that I want to talk to you about today. Years later. When I get so tired of making beds, I had two sets of up beds, two cribs. I would get so tired of washing clothes, Elizabeth. I would get so tired, ladies, of doing that work that uh, I was making one of those bunk beds one day, and the Holy Spirit told me this. It's not work. It's a ministry. And when I learned that truth, that taking care of my home and those children to God, it's a ministry. Sometime down the road that God was going to use us. God was going to work in our hearts and lives. And I wanted that. And from that day to now, I see it as a ministry. And I'm not, I, you don't stop being a mother. I have one son that'll be 62 next month. And uh, that's what I'm 
baby, my boy Samuel, <laughs> is a baby. He's almost, well, he's 43. He's 43. I know he's 43. He's born in a <laughs> I remember I was there. <laughs> so I know he's 43. But anyways, it's a ministry. It's not work. So girls, the little girls sitting there, if you're, see, you're a little girl, uh, remember that if you should ever, Lord, send you someone that really loves you, really, 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 really loves you, and you have those little ones, remember that is a ministry. And I'm still, you never call me a mother, as long as you are still a mother, every day is Mother's Day. But, you know, my thought today, you have to go to that, I guess, uh, is this thought on prayer. Uh, prayer is one of the greatest ministries that you'll ever have when you are a woman, a mother, or not a mother. Kim sits back there, she's got all kinds of kids. <laughs> all kinds of kids love her. I know, I'll buy your, I've seen it. And uh, I know, Gloria, Gloria said, but she doesn't have any children, but Gloria loves children. And you can love children when you have physically birth them or not. There can be people that thought that you in your life. But if you want to really have a ministry, it's this truth in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. And I'm not even there yet, ladies. I'm all way over here. But uh, Romans 8, verse 26, it says, uh, the, uh, I'm still not there. But likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. The Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. And one of the greatest infirmities that we have as believers, Christians, is not knowing how to pray. Now, I'm not arrived. I have not arrived. But I've learned some things about praying. And that's why uh, praying for the children, there's nothing greater. Nothing greater than seeing God work in their life, God move. Uh, it's our ignorance, I call it. If, excuse that if you don't like that word. <laughs> that's what I use, your ignorance in prayer. It's your infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for. You know, that's ignorance. It, it's pretty much so, and we don't know it. We haven't figured it all out. But God says there's a blessing ignorance. There's a blessing in the prayer. And I have to confess that, that I don't know how to pray. As I ought, because you remember that Jesus, the disciples, he teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Not how to pray, but teach us to pray. Do I meet you today? In prayer, do I meet you today? In prayer, that's what we need to do. Are you kneeling before the throne of grace? Do you find your sufficiency there? Now my throat got all locked up out back there eating all that good food. <laughs> but that's where we need to start. Do I meet you today in prayer? Every day, every day, every day, every day, you set your feet on the floor. Remember to pray. Because we can get so busy that we forget to pray. But prayer is the most necessary thing in your spiritual life. If I can encourage you and ask you today to remember to pray. Now I know I know some of you ladies, I know some of you very well. And I know that we all need prayer. All need prayer. I need prayer. Uh, we read about prayer. We talk about it. But we need to experience it. And get some answers from God. Uh, in Romans chapter 6, we read about being dead to the law and alive to God. The verse that has helped me more than anything in this Romans, and it's A2, I'm, I'm sure it's A2, I'm pretty sure it's A verse 2, and I'm going back over there. The law of the spirit of life 
in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now we're bound under the law of sin and death until we're made free by the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now to do that, there's got to be a greater law to take place. You know, uh, I'm not a scientist, but I do know about the law of gravity. Okay, I do know about that. If you drop something, it's going to the ground. They're going to the floor. It's not going to go up, not unless there's a greater law that comes into effect, which is the law of aerodynamics. <laughs> and it'll take you up. It'll take you up. So God says the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus because it's a greater thing. Life, we have life. We have life. The law could not give us life. Only bring about death. The, the spirit of life, that's how we pray. By the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus. That's how you pray. Ask the spirit to pray through you. Now, now comes the blessed work of that Holy Spirit. It's expressed in these words. The Spirit have made us free from the law of sin and death. Do you believe that? The Holy Spirit of God that dwells within you today, do you think that that Spirit of God has made you free? I do. I do. So the Spirit makes us free from the power of sin. The Spirit teaches us and leads us so that we walk after the Spirit. In the inner being, we may become spiritually minded. You can become spiritually minded, enable to mortify the deeds of the flesh. And the Holy Spirit helps us, helps all those infirmities. What's your infirmity today? Doubt, fear, anger. Well, God says the Spirit of God helps those infirmities. So He's going to set you free from those things. We all, now, I might be touching on some things that, that uh, maybe it's touching some dark. I don't know. But I had those things in my life. I had them terribly bad. But I can say, and the people that know me uh, know me that I don't think I portray the spirit of fear. Because I know that it's some things from bondage. But our ignorance. You must be convinced. I, say, I just say, uh, Andy, I say, uh, Lord, I don't know how to pray. I'm just ignorant and kind of pray. I mean, you pray through me. Just pray. Who is it I need to pray for? I know I need to pray for my children. I pray for those every day. I pray for those. You pray. You know, girls, I, I challenge these young girls to pray for their parents. They need prayer. Because I'm a parent, and I've been a parent for almost 62 years, and I still need I need a lot of people. I'm a grandmother. Great grandmother. Great, great mother. <laughs> I think so. so. Kelly, our daughter in law Kelly sent me a little thing yesterday and telling the eight year old boy, eight year old boy that had written an essay and he was telling how what a grandmother is and she's bad. But she likes to do fun things and she's the only one that has any time. You believe that I do. I believe that. Because usually you take time when you have I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, you know, Abraham, when he went out, God said, you go out, you know. He went out. That was kind of an ignorant faith, but a trusting faith. So he, had, he didn't know where he was going, but he knew he had, was following God. He knew God was going to lead him. And that's what Abraham knew that. And the disciples, you know, that wanted to take their place beside Jesus on the throne and they didn't know what they were praying for. They did not. Have, not they did not know. That was ignorant. <laughs> They're pretty dumb. <laughs> but Paul says, no man knoweth the things of God, but the Spirit of God. The only one that knows the things of God. There's a big ocean, a big ocean, I call it. If you all know Corinthian Boom, if you ever read any Corinthian Boom book, she said there's an ocean of love out there. You just can't touch that ocean. Love. You love people no matter what. You know, you can 
<laughs> There's a big ocean of truth lying all around who undiscovered before us. So much to learn about prayer. My small, I'm a small. I want to put a little verse to you today. Long to pray. I want to live in your hearts today. If I don't accomplish anything by God's grace. As women and young women, we may feel we have no influence and power over all the sin, all the sin in this wicked world, in America, in home, in the cities in America. We have no influence in schools. We feel like we don't have any influence, but let me tell you we do. There's two little ladies. You ever heard of the Hebrew islands and that where the great revival took place years ago, and I love to read about revivals I've read for years. The Lewis revival was one of them. It was a mighty work. Young people fell on their faces before God all the way to the church. They didn't know why they were coming. They came. They were drawn by the Spirit of God, and they were saved. <laughs> they liked to party, you know, have their big parties, and I was a teenager one time, too. So I think that that's what we need to do. You need to pray for revival, for true revival. Anyone can do that. I mean, any of you ladies can pray. I mean, if you know the Lord, you can pray. Lord, we know not what we to ask, but Thou knowest what we need to ask. And that's where the Spirit of God, that's what I call that ignorance in your praying. Just ask God to do the work in your heart and show you. Uh, I've got so much I have to share. But I don't want to see you because I know you're stuck like I am. And I've got a long way to travel. <laughs> and, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit can pray a hundred times better than we can. You know, the Holy Spirit can pray a hundred times better. Because God is all powerful. So he can do anything. Uh, he can turn the water into wine. He can do anything. Let me tell you a little story. It's personal. I like to tell personal. It's real. Uh, when I found out I was pregnant with Stephen, and, well, Stephen was like my third day, so I'm talking. No, <laughs> Stephen, uh, I was having sex with him, uh, and I thought, oh, Lord, how are we going to do this? Because my husband, he didn't have a very good job. I mean, he worked, but he didn't, you know, the salary wasn't much enough. We had very little income. And I knew we were struggling anyway, and I thought, well, how are we going to feed another one? You know, how, how is this going to be done? Uh, and I texted him you know, one Sunday night. I remember, Elizabeth, I had one bottle left of Sim Now, Similac, you know what Similac is? Okay, I remember. Uh, I want a bottle, and I thought, oh, that's all I have. And what am I going to do? What is that bottle? Lord, I'm just pity party, you know. I feel so sorry for me. And uh, but I thought, well, I'll just stay home in my church. That's not what you do. And you need to ask for prayer. You go to church. Believe in God. That he's going to answer your prayer. Amen. And you know. What do you know? <laughs> do you know? Yes, we got to church after the service was over. This dear little Louise was her name. I'll never forget her name, Louise Smith. Let me tell you, you don't forget people like that, do you? She came up to me and she said, Sister Rose, here's two dollars. Now, two dollars was a lot of money in 1974. It could buy a lot of Similac. <laughs> you could buy a lot of Similac, hands of Similac. Don't you know, I went to the store and got all the similar I could get for two dollars. God knew my need at that time. Trust him. I mean with a little thing. That's not a little thing when your baby might be hungry. That's a big thing, honey. That's a big thing. Holy Spirit, he works, uh, works in salvation. That's what that thought is. When you're praying for people, get saved, don't give up on them. Just keep on praying for the light breaks through. My God will answer, he will answer you. He will. In a day when so many of us as women, we're wont to do great, mighty things, mighty works, <laughs> you know, but the greatest work of all. Take some time and just go before God and say, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit to pray through me. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. 
and believe it and let him do the work in her. There's women out there today that they're so troubled and so confused and so mixed up and have a lot of needs. There's women sitting here, young women, ladies today that have so many needs. But God can meet those needs. I, I want to give another little real life experience with uh, our oldest grandchild, Jordan was born. Uh, her mother is a short little girl, or 11. Her first child, of course, is her first grandchild. <laughs> and, uh, she uh, uh, they did this labor, but she could not have a child. Eventually, the baby was a C section. And it was like late night, close to 12 o'clock at night or later, uh, that Jordan was born. I think she was born after midnight, maybe one o'clock, something like that. But uh, they finally decided they were going to take her in for C section. And the 45 minutes to an hour, the doctor said, we'll be out. We kept waiting, her mother was with me, kept waiting, waiting, and waiting. We're not going to see a baby or a mark or anybody, you know, what's going on? Finally, the door opens and Mark comes out, and I knew, listen, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Uh, mark had a dejected look on his face, wasn't happy. He wasn't smiling at all. And he walks closer to us and he says, they don't think that is going to happen. Well, her mom, I thought, Lord, you think it was going to drop to the ground, the floor. I said, Lord, this woman is through here. Let's pray together. And we went in and we sat down at this little round table like they have in the hospital room. So two little chairs. We sat down in those chairs and we began to pray. And the girl, God is real. The presence of God came in that room. And I said, Lord, she's going to be okay. I said, she's going to be okay. Well, my husband was downstairs with his uh, uh, Mark brothers that had assembled down there to see this baby, you know. And uh, Kyle goes down there and prays with them. And that same presence of God was in that room down there. And don't you know God touched her? Uh, they had to do a hysterectomy that night, too. She hemorrhaged so badly. Kelly will tell you she was so near death that she thought she was really dying. But God brought her through that. So if you pray for that family, pray for Jordan. She's 33 yesterday. She was 33 years old yesterday. But pray for that family. But God is a God who loves us and longs to hear our prayers and to answer those prayers. God hears me. Believe that. God hears me when I pray, young lady. God answers when I pray. He answers. And I want you to know that God can meet all the assaults of Satan, anything that comes against you from Satan. God can take care of that too. So if you're going through that right now, we have access to the Father all the time. <laughs> All the, does that hurt? All still mean all. I think it does. We got a world church. It just <laughs> Kyle would say, my husband said, Heather, what does all mean? She said, all. <laughs> all. <laughs> That's what it means. It means all. When a mother must leave her place at the altar, when we're praying, if you're a mother, and you know how busy it is, don't you? Being mothers, heck, it sometimes. I'm telling you. And our girls, you you have um, access to the Father. When you're praying and you're interrupting, don't get it all agitated. Just find God. Now, I'm relating to mothers right now. Just find God in your domestic affairs, in your household. He's there waiting for you. You can pray. You can pray changing the baby diaper. You can change fixing a meal. You can change uh, pray taking care of your family and any access that they need. That you can pray. And you can find God there too. You don't have to wait till you get on busy knees. I advise you to get on busy knees sometimes. I can't anymore. I have to sit in the 
the chair. I've got my little rocker, because uh, my knees don't work very well. When you get almost 82 year old, your knees give away, ladies. After you carry the, you know, seven boys to give birth to them, and twins that weigh almost 17 pounds, and 10 pounders, and I've got, well, you get pretty worn out. <laughs> so you've got to do something to compensate for your need of prayer. You've got to get the chair or somewhere. And the Spirit makes a free from, uh, there's a freedom of God gives us from the, uh, we feel like sometimes we we don't know how to pray. We feel like we uh, don't have power, but he gives us the power to pray. That we can pray because He's all terrible. We are weak. When that's one of our infirmities, our weakness in prayer. But I want to share with you something too. And I know I've not uh, taken as much time as I could have, ladies. Uh, <laughs> Paul, I'm thinking about it, and I wish I had one of these for every one of you ladies, because I think that even you girls that are single, not married, or thinking about being married, or something like that, whatever it is. Uh, it's called For Our Children. Uh, if you don't, if you've known me very long, I'll tell you one name that you will hear, definitely hear from me, is a lady called Amy Carmichael, who had a, a homes in India. In the, she was there for 51 years, never came back to her homeland of Ireland, and she built these homes for the temple little girls that was taken out of temples in India. The, and she made a home for them, and the boys too later. Uh, she had a hospital. But Amy Carmichael was my spiritual mother. I did not have a lot of older women in my life to help me as a young Christian. I depended on some of the uh, people, uh, well, one dear lady, Frances Richmond, personally knew her, that put into my hands Amy Carmichael. And you girls, you have a lot of devices today to use, but I like a book in hand. Get you a book, get one of Amy Carmichael's books. Get a book called Amy Carmichael of Donaker. It's India, in India. I think you all have it from when you're from India. Uh, read that book about her life. It'll change your life. Yeah. Uh, Father, hear us. We are praying. Hear the words our hearts are saying. We are praying for our children. Keep them from the powers of evil, from the secret hidden peril, from the whirlpool that would suck them. I mean, literally, Satan would just take them into this whirlpool of sin and destroy them. From the treacherous quicksand like thee, from the whirlwind's hollow gladness, from the sting of faithless sadness, Holy Father, save our children. I would dare say, if there's a raise of hands here today, that a lot of you women could say that Holy Father, save our children, grandchildren, the home. Through life's troubled waters, steer them. Through life's bitter battle, cheer them. Father, Father, be thou near them. Read the language of our longing. Read the wordless, pleading, groaning. You know, the word that we can't express, groanings which cannot be uttered. The wordless heart cry for our children. Let me tell you, there's no, you can't let up on them. Children. You got pray for them. Uh, Father, Father, be thou near them. Read the language <coughs> of our longings. Read the wordless, pleading longings. Holy Father, for our children. And whenever they, wherever they may abide, wherever they are, wherever the children are, lead them home. That is. Now, you could say that, lead them home, and even come after our physical home, but I'm thinking about heaven. I, I, I want to see. I, yesterday, I had a real burden for all of our children, for every one of them. And uh, I was praying for them, and I'm not giving myself any glory when I say this, but 
I didn't have words, but God knew what each one of them and their boys and their spouses and their grandchildren. Each one of them needs, but he knows what the heart is. And that's another thing I had so much I wanted to share. When he says he searches the heart. It's not, we're bad to change words in the Bible and not know it, but it does not say the heart. It says the hearts. So he searches me. He searches maybe the heart of that person as well as those people that are involved in their life. He knows how to deal with them all. So he searches the hearts. He searches my heart as I pray. And he searches her heart as I pray for her on his heart as I pray for him. Now, um, this this is the well, my heart. <laughs> I'm not used to these cords, ladies. Uh, uh, but anyway, that uh, verse 26, back to that verse. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we all, but there's that but. I hear Samuel say that. He likes the but. I listen to every service in there. And I thought, you think I don't? You just got to know don't think it. Because I watch them. But I know these ladies. I watch you all. But anyway, that maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Amen. Knows the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. So we can ask for more than that, can we? Make an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So if you have a friend at school or a friend you girls that go to school, I don't have any boys in here, so I can't say boys, but like I can say, uh, when you teach Sunday school, I, I have literally been teaching Sunday school for over 50 years, and it breaks my heart right now. I don't have Sunday school. Because uh, this is why Lockwood, Lockwood. <laughs> I knew Lockwood a long time ago, too. <laughs> uh, it's this, I'll tell you what it is. We were at the church for Buffalo Life Baptist Church for over 20 or 21, 22 years. We, had, we experienced five floods. Floods are not floods. But the water comes halfway up the walls. It, takes, it just takes months and months and months. You just don't ever get the mold. You don't ever get the dirt out. And it's uh, an old building to begin with. And then this was about the sixth flood, I think, if my memory is searching. It, my mind's right. I believe it was the sixth flood. Um, we had to tear the building down because of the mold. And we're searching now for a place to meet. And but we're meeting at Calvary Baptist there in Clintwood for Kim goes to church. At one o'clock on Sunday we don't have a Sunday school. Uh, but we meet and I don't teach you tomorrow. But uh, I taught my first class I remember was junior aged children, boys and girls. Now, the first day, I have to tell you this, because some of you ladies need to teach junior age children <laughs> to experience what I've done on you. Uh, uh, and there was a little boy, and guess what? He was a pastor's son. <laughs> and he would not sit in his chair. Uh, and uh, the only one, the only one I had, he was the only one. Jeff was his name. And, uh, I said, Jeff, I think maybe we're going to have more children in here, and we may need to sit in our chair, and so they'll learn to sit in their chairs. It's all they took to do that. Jeff was in his chair. And our class grew. Then the Lord allowed me to teach teenage girls, and then women. And that's what I've had when our church led. So you pray for us at home to meet at the little, whatever the little thought. It's been a challenge. Uh, it's been a challenge. But the Lord did it. I want to thank you for it. And I want to read this, and then we're going to pray. And we're going to let you ladies go. I know you're tired.
But um, this is a true, true story. This is real. I'm telling this little girl named Mimosa. She heard about Jesus from Amy Carmichael, the owner there in India. She heard about Jesus. She forgot his name, but she had trusted him as her savior. Now you might not think this could happen, but it's a true story. Her dad brought her, you know how that in the cast in India, you just don't leave your kids with anyone and you've got to follow through with the rules and regulations and all the things. So uh, she was not allowed to stay there. She was taken out of the home. But she heard about Jesus. She trusted this Savior. But when she got away, she could not remember his name. But for 20 long years, this dear woman, she grew up to be a young woman, a woman was married, had children. She uh, prayed to Jesus. Her Savior. Trusted her Savior. She was holy. There's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit called. She did not have the Word of God. She did not have a Bible. But eventually she went back, after 20 years or so, to that home. She knew more, spiritually speaking, than those girls that had the Bible and the written word of God. She could tell them things about God that no one else knew about. And about the Holy Spirit and how he worked in her life. So I'm going to read two or three little statements here and then we're going to be uh, Amy Carmichael said this was a new insight in spiritual prayer. In the, you know what I talked about? That we're ignorant and we're powerless? Well, this is what she said. She said when she went to that place, she said, uh, uh, I could hardly breathe in that little room where my mother went and shut the door. And when you know, you shut the door when you pray, you had to listen to God if you were talking to him. Said, I could hardly breathe, almost my heart questioned him, the things that I had heard. Can it be here, O oh Lord of life and light and liberty, that thou didst meet her so often? Can such dinginess be indeed the place of my presence? It was a little room, thought about the rice back there, appropriate for today, uh, with rice sacks stacked up, it's dying and damp and dingy, but that's where she went. And uh, that hot darkness, and Shannon Carmichael said, I stood there in that old dark place but the presence of God was there. And I thought of the angels ascending, descending, not on a ladder, but they were in there. Not on some ladder set up under the stars, but here in this strip of a room, take off your shoes. So I'm the Carmel, but when you think she took off her shoes? Yeah, she did. And that stands is on holy ground and a new insight, or I call it, now it's a scary revelation. <laughs> a new revelation came to this little lady. It said, like the sun flies, that sometimes lights the evening sky in these tropical lands. And I knew not my place. I knew beside. I, could, I knew the presence. We say we talk about prayer, we believe in prayer, but we say, okay, I'll, I'll pray for you. Don't ever say, I'll pray for you, not the you can pray for me. <laughs> if you want to pray for me, you can pray for me all day and all night. But, yeah, prayer. Okay, back to this. I do not the faith now, but as it was sight, that our Lord Jesus Christ can do anything Keep anyone, if you keep anyone, shine anywhere, super in spite of all the forces of evil. He can strengthen you, support you, even though the forces of Satan are all around. He can still help you. And comfort, and comfort in any circumstances. Circumstances are nothing when it comes to 
God into several. To several. Yeah. They're nothing to God. They're just nothing. We, we, Jesus, well, how is that? Bad circumstances. Well, God. But God, that boy, he won't let in that bad circumstance. Okay. Yeah. So he is king of them all. All this, what we think of material things as perilous and cramp are subdued. It is not. The spiritual comfort every time. And that's what we're talking about. The spiritual comfort. We're talking about the spirit itself makes an intercession for us with wrongs which can not be done. And so if you want to pray for me, you pray for them. You just ask God to uh, pray for you. Pray for you, children. Pray for your family. I need a lot of prayer. Uh, we all need prayer. Uh, I, I, I just uh, think of, my, well, my little boy, you know, the pastor here. I think of Samuel. And I'm not putting in play for Samuel. I'm saying he needs one prayer. Because we've been there. We've been, I, uh, we've been pastor, pastor now for years. And I know, I know, I from experience, but there's nothing greater to know that it's God's will for your life and be right in the center of His will. And uh, I know I, I don't have any knowledge of this. I have no, not any. I don't know what a note is or what is your, I just know the Lord. And, and when the disciples said that, uh, uh, I'm going to sing a little bit of this song. I know we don't, don't want to hear it, but I'm going to sing it anyway. <laughs> Teach me to pray. Thank you. 